Hi guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about why earnouts are the number one way for you to maximize price, reduce buyer risk, and build confidence between the buyer and the seller and the deal itself. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then stick around and watch this short video. Hi, I'm Mick Godwin, and we've seen lately a huge increase in earnouts um, coming to the table. Now, they're still relatively um, not unknown, but just a lot less uh, common in smaller transaction under the $1 million mark. Um, but once we're sitting hitting that $1 million mark, earnouts are definitely at least in the discussion. So let's talk about a few things why um, they're becoming so popular. What that actual performance relates to can be anything from EBITDA earnings, contracts, renewal of contracts, issuance of, of patents, or simply just uh, linked to revenue growth. So who benefits from the earnouts knowing that? Well, it can be the buyer, it could be the seller, but usually it's both. Because when looking at purchasing any financial or, or revenue generating assets, there's whether it be real estate or bonds or stocks or businesses themselves, it's always tied to a risk. Now, the more risk that's involved, um, the higher you, the expected returns. So therefore, when you consider about, you know, 50% of small businesses in Australia, um, and the ATO, uh, I think, you know, states that as a small business is anything that has revenue under a $10 million mark. So that that definition is a bit is a bit loose, but 50% um, of those businesses don't make it through uh, two years. So there is a huge amount of risk when entering the this, this small uh, special or medium business market in Australia. So implementing uh, an earn out helps reduce a lot of that risk and um, puts a little bit more emphasis on the seller. It's in their best interest to, um, you know, at least continue on that business, help for a smoother transaction and uh, maybe keep their estimates of, of the future potential of the business in check. Because that, that future potential could be um, true and, and all, that's all well and good. So structuring some payments um, under an earnout structure then just helps the buyer uh, move forward on those projections because if they are true, then usually the buyer has no qualms about uh, paying, uh, uh, reaching that value agreement. But um, you know, there's always risk as if, if everyone's got their own definition of what potential there is in a business. And usually the, the question goes, if there's so much potential, why hasn't it been done already? So um, they're a really good bridging tool but in that respect. All right, so what ex exactly happens? Well, you've got a, a settlement price and you've got a deferred amount of money. Um, let's just call it a million dollars. Um, at settlement, it's 600,000. Uh, moving forward in six months, it could be another $200,000 is paid and then another $200,000 is paid in 12 months. So what that can really do, it, it allows you to put a, a price tag on potential, which is extraordinarily difficult in any other way and it acts as a deal catalyst for bridging the perceived value gaps um, that the buyer and the seller have. But it's not all necessarily um, advantages just in terms of getting the deal done. From a seller's perspective, it could be a really good way to minimize tax uh, and especially any tax burdens if you've got a really large sum of money coming all in one. Um, so usually what we'll do is we'll get accountants involved as well um, and they can sort of the, discuss any advantages that will come from the seller as well. Not all sellers want to stay in the business for a, a prolonged period of time if they're ready to sell, but if they can see, um, you know, tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars difference in, in tax advantages, then usually that's a really good prompt um, to get them to enter the earn out agreement. Now, there's, there's more than plenty uh, of positive reasons of what an earn out can bring to the table, but there are um, a lot of uh, sort of negative or concerns that surround what an earnout can do to a deal. So just because the concept of an earnout is simple, they can actually be really difficult to put together because the the primary the primary disadvantage of an earnout is either party, both buyer and seller, can manipulate uh, the outcome in, in that particular business if if they have those sort of controlling mechanisms in place to really affect what the end of the earnout does. If the seller is in charge, um, they can sort of neglect long-term strategy 
and do things for short-term goals, short-term being that six or 12 or 18 months that the earnouts are tied to. You know, things, simple things like loosening credit terms or, or if it's just tied to revenue, uh, bringing, going on a prolonged um, sale to undercut other, the other suppliers in, in their market or their competitors and really uh, improve that top line. Now for buyers involved, well, they can do things like uh, huge investments into R&D or excessive expenses that will bring the profit down. Um, and they could just do the, put the prices up um, to stop that short-term revenue growth. So there's a lot, the, the framework of an earnout really has to uh, be quite strong and an agreeance um, of, from the buyer and seller and what those buyer and seller are gonna do in that preceding six to 12 months is really important for them to work together. Now, usually you've got a buyer that wa wants to do well in the business and do and bring the business forward. And you've also got a seller that wants to hit their goals, but also wants the buyer to, um, you know, grow the business and take it from where they've left it. So nine times out of 10 um, that they go on without a hitch or without any malice, at least um, in the deal. But every now and then these things happen. So it's important to get a really strong structure around the framework of the earnout. So in conclusion, uh, earnouts can be really beneficial, but they, you know, they should be used as a last resort to help bridge that valuation gap. Um, if you can avoid an earnout and, and and hit a and hit a, an agreement on price and terms, then that's always going to be a lot easier because they do they will incur um, solicitor fees to draft the, the agreement together, um, and of course they tie the deal over a longer period of time um, instead of say you know, three months, it's now 18 months. So uh, look, they're a fantastic thing, but um, just be cautious if you're moving towards the one, get the correct advice. And if you want to talk more about earnouts um, and how that looks for your business, then get in touch. Um, look, the details are on my webpage. Uh, they're probably below this video or in this email, uh, however you're watching it, wherever you're watching it. And we can talk about the best way to structure your business um, so you can get the best price that the market will allow uh, and help you exit your business in good time and without stress. Okay, I'm Mick Godwin. Thanks for listening.